When it comes to console exclusive games, they can choose to be focused on single player, multiplayer or a combination of the two. Sony has established itself as a bastion of cinematic single player games over the past console generation. While PlayStation fans have had the occasional unique versus mode, the brand has never been known for hardcore online competition. Competitive battlegrounds are now few and far between outside of regular multi-platform titles. Every so often though, there's an exclusive that comes along and sets the standard for the console. Warhawk and Starhawk were two such titles. Falling in line with DICE's Battlefield in their offering of Combined Arms Warfare, the two games have been long forgotten by much of the community and their publisher. We'll start with Warhawk, developed by Incognito Entertainment, who were best known for their work on the Twisted Metal franchise. The PlayStation 3 title was not the debut of the series, as Warhawk can actually be traced all the way back to an incredibly obscure flight sim on Sony's debut console. Before the system itself arrived, the 2007 rendition was already making waves at the E3 press events, though the game would ditch its single-player campaign and go multiplayer only in the lead-up to launch. Warhawk represents a multiplayer experience that's now incredibly rare in modern gaming, a design structure that makes merely playing the game its own reward. It was made at a time before progression systems became the norm, and gaming publishers started coming up with crackpot schemes to make more money. The game is a case of simply jumping in and taking on your foes with no added baggage. What's most impressive about Warhawk to this day is its near complete freedom of movement across a wide range of player options. Each of these has its own skill ceiling to overcome, and the player can swap back and forth between them at will. You may be taken to the air one moment, then think, time to switch things up, I'm going to take that tank and capture the control points on the map. Quick spawn times on both vehicles and weapons mean you can always stay on the move, devising new strategies to tip the scales in your favour. On top of that, the game's brilliant variety and map variation gives ample room for devious tactics, Archipelago, for example, can be tailored to a massive war across the full-scale map, all shrunk down to a more claustrophobic deathmatch. No matter which setup you choose, there's plenty of room for the game's trinity of on-foot, vehicle and aerial combat. In another component that is now less prevalent, weapon pickups are layered sparingly across the maps, encouraging players to learn their ins and outs to more effectively take on competitors. Even with a tutorial mode added later though, Warhawk's online battles are pretty ruthless. Death comes incredibly quickly across the maps, whether it's by an enemy fighter outmaneuvering you, or the sheer power of explosive weaponry. When looking at it as a whole package, Warhawk's aesthetics and weaponry are very mundane when compared to other online titles. There's no background lore, hidden narratives or thoughtful themes to keep track of, just Equidean and Chernovan forces going at it. Yet the game overcomes this fairly vanilla tone to offer a title that's simply fun to play. This is something that many modern releases have forgotten about nowadays. Its tools may be standard fare, but there's also the occasional highlight, like the binoculars which can cool down an artillery strike. With its first online hit, the PlayStation Network began to gain ground, but Warhawk offered more beyond the base package. How about a free update and paid expansion packs that genuinely add to the gameplay experience? These would all arrive between 2008 and 2009, the former bringing the wrench for repairing vehicles and the biofield generator which can heal you and your team in a pinch. As for the expansions, Warhawk had three of them, Omega Dawn, Broken Mirror and Fallen Star. What each of these did was bring in a new vehicle that massively contributed to the game's options. The dropship is a flying tank for up to 7 players, and the ability to pick up and drop off smaller vehicles is an infinitely useful asset. Then there's the APC, which not only serves as a mobile spawn point, but can also drop a shield for added protection. Running a full squad, each firing their weapons out of the hatch was incredibly satisfying. Finally, the jetpack was a simple addition that allowed players to bail out of their jet while airborne and facilitate faster traversal on foot. Sadly, in the interest of balance, players were never able to combine jetpacks with dropships or any other combination. Warhawk's popularity was fueled by its release early on in the PS3's life cycle. Resistance Fall of Man may have offered 40 player combat on launch, but it was Incognito Entertainment that delivered the system's first online hit. Surprisingly, the game is still being played today. While Sony shut down the official online servers in January 2019, the game's community lives on with Warhawk Reborn from one Dominic Falhammer. 
It's an Android app that tunnels local area network access to allow the continued use of dedicated servers. I've included a link to the project in the description. Now we come to Starhawk. Starhawk is both a familiar and different beast in equal measure. For five years, rumours persisted that Incognito, then rebranded as Lightbox Interactive, were putting together a spiritual successor to Warhawk. It was eventually announced and released in 2012 as one of the final multiplayer-focused titles for the system. It was met with mostly positive reviews, but didn't achieve the same fanfare as its predecessor. On top of that, the game's multiplayer servers have been shut down as of 2018. The fact that Warhawk kept its online battles going for a year longer on official servers speaks to its increased popularity. As a result, I'm unable to access the online mode and had to stick to the single player mode instead. Yes, that's right, a single player campaign. Incognito ditched the mode for Warhawk but pieced one together for Starhawk. Taking place in a nondescript future environment, we follow Emmett Graves, a prospector on the hunt for rift energy in the new frontier. Yet Graves is also afflicted by the energy itself, becoming a hybrid of human and the enemy Scuds that attack the human settlements. With its story being mostly one note and the pacing very stop and starts, it's mostly a training ground for the online action. One that does succeed at covering the game's broad range of vehicles, weapons, and most notably, the new build and battle mechanic. At the time of Starhawk's release, we'd seen killstreaks and player controlled support become the primary rewards for skilled players, but here was a system that allowed any player to bring in base parts and other gear at any time, provided they had enough rift energy. In game, you can call down walls to block enemy forces, auto turrets to boost your defensive line, supply bunkers for weaponry supplies, sniper towers for a height advantage, and even vehicle pads just about anywhere on the map. By pulling the camera out to a wider perspective and automatically connecting previous builds, the system is incredibly intuitive for the most part, but it also drastically changes the pace of combat. In addition to the core shooting, now you've got to worry about a piece of the environment dropping on your head or being destroyed. Players can seamlessly adapt to any combat situation with the right amount of resources at their disposal. I imagine it would have been incredibly chaotic with 32 players engaging with the system at once. Nowadays, the feature of calling down items and vehicles can be seen in Halo 5's Warzone and other asymmetric multiplayer modes. Even with this new feature, however, the core controls adapted from Warhawk are still intact. Piloting both air and ground vehicles remains straightforward. Ground vehicles have a great sense of speed, but the Hawk in particular is the highlight here, transforming into a mech for some ground combat and a powerful stomp attack. The only gap is that you can't pitch and roll the plane with the right stick like you could before, which is instead replaced by these more scripted manoeuvres. Interestingly, Starhawk was one of the last console releases for a time to offer fully controllable space combat. In the PS4 and Xbox One generation, developers seemed reluctant to upgrade it with new hardware, with games like Destiny and Star Wars Battlefront foregoing the mode altogether. While its space western style is also more coherent and well established, it also ends up cutting out some features that could have been updated from Warhawk. The dropship and APC did not return for the spiritual successor, which could have been expanded to work alongside the building system. The same holds true of the cutscenes. While the story they tell is nothing to write home about, they do feature an artistic aesthetic that's unique to the third person genre. Unfortunately, by the time Starhawk arrived in 2012, the modern military FPS craze had reached a fever pitch, resulting in a far more competitive genre scene and greater expectations from the masses. Its build and battle system was unique at the time, but it wasn't enough to tie players over from the bigger franchises. As of the server shutdown, there have been no efforts to resurrect the title. Lightbox Interactive has also been labelled defunct over much of the last decade, having not released any further titles since then. There's little information on sales figures for both games, but they were able to form their own niche in the online market. Though Sony and the PlayStation brand have achieved huge success with the single-player oriented titles lately, there should be room for exclusive online titles on the upcoming PlayStation 5. While many a console owner enjoys popping in the latest Call of Duty or Battlefield every year, the online scene deserves some broader competition. Thanks for watching. Warhawk in particular was one of my favourite online arenas in the early days of the PlayStation 3. Sony should look to invest in more titles like it. If you enjoyed the video, you can follow my blog at the links in the description.